This story took place a couple of years ago, during my first year of college. It was July, and I was searching online for a place to live in the city I would be moving to for school. I didn't exactly know anyone in this city, so I was looking for an apartment close to campus, and at a somewhat decent price. It took about a week of searching when I found a small house that was maybe a ten or so minute walk away from the school. It had a kitchen, living room, dining room, and two bedrooms. It looked really great online. Although I did start to wonder for a minute why the rent seemed so low, as college students are always looking for a place close to campus, and prices for those places are usually higher or all the decent places are already occupied. I thought to myself though, Hey, it's a good deal, might as well try it. So I did. I emailed the landlord and sent him a deposit. The landlord told me I would have a roommate named Matt. Matt was apparently a second year college student and had been living in the house for a few years already. I got the address and a week later I moved into the house as I prepared to start college. The first week in my new home was fairly uneventful. I unpacked and showed myself around town. I also met my roommate my second day at the house, as he had been out late the night before. Matt seemed like a pretty chill guy at first. We both liked the same sports teams, and he said that he liked to be out in nature. I did too. That night we drank some beer and spent some time chatting together. There didn't seem to be anything unusual at all. Matt was in college going for a degree in business. Now, I don't want to sound rude, but business school is a lot more generic than many other classes and programs. I mean, it can get a person far if they have ideas and aspirations on what to do afterwards with their education. Anyways, I knew that Matt didn't study very much, but did okay in his classes as far as I knew. I was in a program to become a physiotherapist assistant, and uh, believe me, I sure had to study. Anatomy class is literally the worst. There were a few times in the first few weeks where Matt would ask me over and over to go out with him for the evening, for what he called an adventure. He wouldn't specifically tell me what though, but I refused as I had to do my schoolwork. After a few weeks, I started making friends in my classes and would spend more time either hanging out with them or studying with them. I would often come home at around 10pm and sometimes Matt would be there. Other times, he wouldn't. I didn't really think much about it and would watch some TV before bed or just chill out. Although, there was one day I was at the house and was making myself a grilled cheese sandwich and some mac and cheese for supper when Matt came home. We chatted a bit, talking about school and about things going on around town or on campus. This is when Matt suddenly asked me, Hey man, have you heard about those creepy-ass clown dudes hanging around campus lately? I told him, no, I haven't heard anything about that. I remember there being clown sightings all over the state a while back, but I hadn't heard anything about that recently. He told me, yeah, a few of my classmates claim they've seen clowns or groups of clowns following them home or hanging around by their dorms on campus. I heard security's been doing more rounds too. I told him I thought it was weird, but it sounded like some BS or something some other college students were doing to play pranks on each other. A few weeks later, and Halloween was only a week or so away. It was a Friday night, and I had been invited to this big party that a friend's roommate was having on campus. I had a midterm earlier that day, so I was eager to go out and party and have a good time. I didn't see Matt before I left for the party that night. It was honestly pretty great. I saw a lot of my friends, made a lot of new ones, had some drinks, and enjoyed the night. The first hour in, I got a text from Matt. Matt asked me if I was busy, and that he had something he wanted to do together. I texted him back that I was at a party, but maybe we could do something Saturday or Sunday, if he really wanted to. I didn't have much homework for that weekend. I put my phone away and continued to enjoy talking to people and the rest of the party. More and more people started showing up. People were coming and going all night. Around 2 a.m., I decided I'd had my fill and that it was a good time to go back home. I drunk quite a bit and was starting to just feel absolutely tired. I said goodbye to a few of my friends before leaving to walk home. It felt a bit brisk outside, but it was refreshing, as it had been hot and stuffy inside that house with all those people. 
I put my earbuds in and started to listen to music off my phone for the walk. Normally, I'm never a paranoid person. I don't mind walking out at night alone in a city I'm not too familiar with yet, and I was used to walking down sketchy neighborhoods from back home. I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up slightly after getting a few blocks away from the party. I took one earbud out so I could hear if any cars were coming up behind me or anything. I kept walking. At first, I thought maybe I was just tired and it was making me paranoid for some reason. I got to a crosswalk and stopped to fix my backpack as I hadn't closed it properly before leaving the party and I thought I felt a bottle falling out of it. As I took my backpack off and turned around though, I was startled to see this clown right in front of me. He wore one of those one-piece costumes with stripes and polka dots on them. The clown had one of those scarier-looking clown masks on. It was mostly white with fake red hair sticking out of the top. He had a red nose and black paint around the eyes. I stood there shocked and more than a bit confused, analyzing this clown. He held up a liquor bottle that he must have slipped out of my bag somehow. He was holding the bottle by the neck in a tight grip. When he started to smile at me, my fight or flight kicked in, and I guess my legs chose to flee before my mind had any say in it. As I ran across the street, I could hear him making this menacing, evil laugh. It kind of reminded me of Pennywise from It, but purposely higher pitched. I kept running till I got to my house. I got inside and shut and locked the door. I closed the curtains as well. I hadn't seen the clown chase after me or anything, but I wanted to be cautious for almost the first time in my life. I went straight to my room and hit the bed and passed out. The next morning, I woke up. It took me a few minutes till I'd had a few sips of coffee to remember the strange incident that happened the night before. At the time, it was a little fuzzy in my mind. I didn't dwell on the clown for too long, as my roommate Matt soon came home. He didn't come to the kitchen and chat or anything like usual. Instead, he went straight to his room. A few weeks went by, and I wasn't really thinking anything about that clown incident anymore. Instead, I was really busy with schoolwork and studying for all these tests. I got a new girlfriend around that time, and we were in the same classes together, so we were together a lot studying or relaxing and watching movies and stuff. I had a TV in my bedroom, so when we were at my place, we didn't spend much time in the main house. Again, it was a Friday night, and we had finished studying for the evening and decided to order a pizza and watch some movies. I went and knocked on Matt's bedroom door to see if he wanted anything from the place we were going to order from, but he didn't answer. I hadn't ever heard him leave the house, but I had been trying to concentrate on my work. After placing a call to my favorite pizza place in town, I sat back down to find us a movie to watch. About 20 minutes later, the doorbell rang. I grabbed my wallet and went to the door, expecting to see the pizza delivery man, but when I opened it, that clown, the same one from the night weeks ago, was standing right there. This time, he was on another level of crazy. He just stood there with one of those balloons on a stick that one would get at a fair or a dollar store. It also looked like he had smeared fake blood onto the clown mask. Well, I wasn't going to let this psycho ruin the evening and scare my new girlfriend, so I looked at this clown and loudly and aggressively told him that if he didn't leave this second, I was going to call the cops. Instead of leaving, this just made the clown start to smile. Again, he started laughing, starting from a small chuckle to this hysterical clown laugh. I slammed the door shut and locked it. I decided to wait and see if he would just go away on his own. I sat in the kitchen by the door for another ten minutes before the doorbell rang again. This time, I grabbed a large knife from the knife block. I wasn't planning on doing anything with it, but I thought it might scare off the clown. With the knife in hand, I swung that door open and was surprised to be greeted by the pizza delivery guy standing there, obviously a bit surprised by the knife in my hand. I apologized swiftly and made an excuse that I was getting stuff for the food, paid him, and gave him a nice tip for the scare. I went back to my bedroom to tell my girlfriend that the food had arrived, and saw her sitting on the floor with the blinds closed. It turns out that after the clown had met me at the front door, he must have snuck around to the back and looked into my bedroom window at her. Freaked her out bad. She didn't know what to do. We decided we would take the pizza and instead go back to her apartment for the evening, as she was quite freaked out, and I won't lie, I was too. 
and the next day I came back to my house around noon. I wanted to go talk to Matt to see if there had been anything happening since he got home that night. I went to his bedroom and knocked on the door. There was no answer, but the door hadn't been closed all the way, so I entered the room to see if he was asleep. Well, Matt wasn't in his room, but in the corner of the room on the floor, I saw this dirty old clown costume with the same stripes and polka dot pattern, the same blood-smeared mask on top of it. At this point, I was livid. I wanted out of the house as soon as possible and away from Matt. I started packing my stuff right away and loaded my car with everything I could. I had a friend whose roommate had just moved out, so I asked if I could move in with him. I blocked Matt's number and contacted my landlord about leaving. I was unable to get my deposit back since I was leaving before my contract was up, but I didn't really care too much about that. I haven't seen or talked to Matt since that night that he tried scaring my girlfriend and I. I've thought a lot about the situation, and I'm guessing all those times Matt tried to get me to go out with him at night, it was to scare people dressed up as clowns, or maybe do something worse. All I know is I'm going to check out my potential roommates in the future before I move in with them, because I do not want to live with a psycho clown ever again. Last year, the night before Halloween, was one of the scariest nights of my life. I'm a 17-year-old female and live at home with my parents and my 14-year-old sister. Halloween has always been one of my favorite holidays. I've always loved to dress up and make my own creepy-looking costumes and help decorate our house and yard. For the last few years, I had been in charge of answering the door on Halloween to give candy to the trick-or-treaters. So, on this Friday night... I was hanging out with my sister watching horror movies and eating junk food as I got some candy bags together for the next night. Our parents had left earlier that day to go see my aunts and cousins for the weekend in a different city. I've always been quite responsible and don't dare to get into much trouble. We lived in a quiet neighborhood as well and nothing too scary had ever occurred before this event. My sister and I just finished watching one of these Saw movies and she was browsing Netflix to find something to put on next. It was already quite dark outside, and it only was about 8 p.m. I remember I was putting all the little bags of candy into a bowl by the front door when I was startled to hear the doorbell. Neither my sister or I were expecting any friends to come over, and our parents hadn't mentioned that anyone would be stopping by this evening either. I knew it wasn't my grandparents because they were also on a weekend trip of their own, or else they'd probably randomly stop by to see us. After thinking for a few seconds about who it could be at our house, I went and opened the door to say hello. Once I opened the door, though, I saw a person standing there, dressed as a clown. They held out this sack in front of them. Now, this person was short, but looked more like an adult to me, although it was hard to tell due to the rubber clown mask they had on. They didn't say a word either, as they just stood still at the door. They didn't say a word either as they just stood still at the door. I gave a small chuckle and said, Hey, I think you got the wrong day. Halloween is tomorrow, buddy. Still, the person in the clown costume didn't say anything. They just thrust their bag closer toward me. I reached back and grabbed a little bag of candy anyways and placed it in the bag thinking about how strange this situation was. Maybe if I just gave them some candy, they'd give up and go away. But no. The clown opened the bag wider and took a step closer. At the same time, I took a step back and said, Hey, listen, I'm not sure what you want. Uh, is there anything else I can do to help you? Instead of speaking, the clown nodded their head. I was starting to feel quite nervous at this point. I felt my body tensing up and my palms feeling sweaty. It seemed this person had been standing in the doorway for quite some time now, and I didn't know what they wanted or what to do. After a moment of silence, the person in the costume suddenly moved forward trying to push their way into the house in an aggressive manner. Right away I tried to slam the door, but they kept it open with half their body. I let out a small startled yelp, and my sister got up to see what was wrong. My sister screamed in panic and terror as I told her to call the cops, and I struggled to keep the door closed. My sister looked like she really wanted to come help me try and keep this clown out of our house but she ran to grab her cell phone in the living room instead. I know that there's not much weight to me to keep someone out, 
I knew sooner or later he would probably overpower me, and I would have to run. The clown on the other side of the door was thrashing into it like a madman, banging hard on it as he did. I could hear him grunting with each hit. Although it was a bit hard to hear anything over the sound of my heart beating out of my chest. After what felt like forever, I was able to hear my sister yelling on the phone at the 911 operator our address and that there was someone trying to break into our house. My sister came onto the porch area with the cell phone to her ear and pointed to the back door. Now that I knew that my sister was on the same page that I was, I was ready to make a run for it. The thing is, at this point in time, I wasn't sure if the clown at the door was armed with anything or not. I didn't want him to have a great chance of attacking us in some way. I remember taking a deep breath, and at the same time my sister and I ran through the house and out the back door. Honestly, I don't know if the clown followed us or even how far if they did, because when we got down the block to a neighbor's house that we knew well and knocked on the door, I looked back down towards ours and saw no one there. Our neighbor made some tea for us and we waited for the five minutes for police to get to our house. Two officers went to check out our house as the third came to speak to us about what had happened. The officer searched our place and the rest of our family's property and even the neighbor's properties around the block, but they couldn't find anyone or anything. In the house, though, officers saw the sign of a struggle near the front door. The door was wide open, the door frame was cracked, the house shoe rack by the door had been violently kicked open. The back door was wide open, too. It didn't appear that anything was taken, as our TV, stereo, and other expensive items were still in the home, but we would have to double-check the house with our parents to make sure. I called my parents to tell them what happened, and that we were going to be staying at the neighbor's for the night in their spare room. Our parents told us they would be home the next day, as they would be leaving right away. My sister and I stayed up drinking tea with our neighbors for a few hours and snacking on some really good pumpkin load. When we were finally shown to the guest room to go to bed, my sister and I stayed up for the majority of the night. Both of us were still terrified. We didn't know what that guy wanted, as it didn't seem like they'd taken anything from the house. We were worried that the police might have missed him and that he was still in the area. Maybe he'd seen us come to this house and he was going to come back for us. Either way, the whole night felt like a literal nightmare. The next day, my sister and I went home when our parents arrived. Nothing's ever felt better than getting hugs from our parents after a night like that. That evening, on Halloween, I decided I wasn't going to answer the door for trick-or-treaters this year after all. My dad would, though. I was scared that any time I opened the door, that clown guy would be standing there with his bag held out, open and ready to attack again. I'm starting to get over this even now, but honestly, I'm a little nervous for Halloween this year, too. Maybe the clown will come back and try whatever it was again. Maybe he'll have a different costume this time. Maybe he would try a different form of attack. Maybe he was just a creep that got off on scaring people. Or maybe I'm just being a bit paranoid. I think I'm gonna stay at a friend's house this Halloween and hand out candy with them. I don't want one bad night to ruin my favorite holiday. This story takes place when I was about eight years old, so it's been well over a decade since the time of this incident. When I was younger, every year a small carnival or fair would come to my area. It would go on for about four days or so, and there was everything a little kid could ask for there. There were rides, candy, games, animals, fun houses, performances, and so much more. Now, I didn't have any siblings, so my mom would normally take me and we would go with my aunt and two cousins. I was the oldest of the three of us, as one was about six and the other about two. The youngest obviously wouldn't be coming on any rides with us, so just my one cousin, I'll call Chris, and myself got our wristbands so we could go on all the rides we could ever want. Normally, my cousin Chris and I stayed close to our parents, or they would know what ride we were on if we weren't in their line of sight. After my cousin and I had gone on a few rides, including a kid's roller coaster, a car track, and tried to pop some balloons to win a prize, we took a small break to get something to eat. My favorite thing to eat to this day at any carnival is curly fries. You know, the ribbon-cut ones. My mom sat my cousin and I down at a picnic table and said she would go get our food. 
while my aunt took my youngest cousin into the facilities to go to the washroom. My mom trusted me to stay at the table and wait, and keep my cousin there as well. Both Chris and I know about the dangers of strangers. We knew that you didn't talk to them unless your parents were there, and you definitely would never go anywhere with one. While Chris and I were sitting at this table waiting, we were trying to decide which rides to do as soon as we were done eating. Suddenly, out of nowhere, this clown approached our picnic table. He had a big red nose and big blue hair and this small little hat. He waved to us with a large grin, and like the kids we were, we smiled and happily waved back to him. The clown came up to us and did one of those huge fake sneezes and did the bit with the never-ending handkerchief. Neither my cousin nor myself had seen a real clown before, just on the TV, so we were very excited and interested in his act. We laughed together and Chris seemed very amazed. He asked the clown how he pulled all that fabric from his pocket. The clown smiled to us and told us, Well, I can't reveal any of my secrets out here. There's too many people, so it wouldn't be a secret anymore. My little cousin looked disappointed that the clown wouldn't show us how he did it. I felt bad and asked him, could you show us, pretty please? The clown made this stern thinking face and pretended to rub his head thinking for a moment before he said, Aha! I have an idea. If you want to come to the back of the lot with me, I can show you my tricks and maybe even make you some balloon animals. What are your favorites? Chris blurted out his love of dogs and the clown nodded and added, I can make you a really big balloon dog if you come with me. We were little kids. We knew enough not to go with strangers, but this clown didn't feel like a stranger to us. He was obviously there to entertain kids, so there didn't seem to be any reason not to trust him. My cousin and I stood up to go with him when I remembered my mom would be back soon with our food and mentioned this to the clown. But my mom is on her way back with our food right now. We're not supposed to leave this table. Clown hurriedly motioned for us to come with him. Come on, it won't take long. We can have you back here in a few minutes. My cousin looked like he really wanted to go, so I made a decision as an eight-year-old girl would and nodded that we could go with him. Okay, but we have to be quick. And the three of us started walking around the carnival ground toward the back lot. It looked very dirty and dusty with a few tables, garbage, and some trailers and equipment. I noticed as we kept walking further and further from the main fairgrounds, we didn't stop at the trailers we were passing either, so I asked the clown, How much further are we going? Can you show us here? I don't see anyone else around. The clown kept ushering us forward, towards his dirty old van parked in the back of the lot. I have the balloons in my van, and some other treats too. Now, I know I was young and naive, but I was starting to feel uncomfortable, and noticing this was starting to feel ominously like a stranger danger situation. My cousin did not seem to feel the same, though, as he still looked excited at the promise of a balloon dog and other surprises. I looked up at the clown. I, uh, think we need to get back to the table. My mom is going to be really mad. I started to feel scared about how she might react if we were not there when she got back. I was also starting to feel scared of the clown, too, and I didn't really know why yet. Look, we're almost there. Come on, he said more aggressively toward me. This is when I tried to take my cousin's hand to stop and pull him back, but when I tried, the clown just scooped me up, pulling me over his shoulder and trying to get me to calm down and behave. You're coming with me. I have a special surprise for you two. Now I was feeling very scared and did what I had been told to do in a stranger danger situation. I screamed. I screamed at the top of my lungs. I screamed no real words, but just made my small voice as loud as I could try to, and tried to attract someone to help us, as I started to cry as well. The clown started moving faster, and snapped Chris up as he had started to cry now too. He told us to shut up before threatening us in some way. I can't remember what he said, because I was panicking and trying to scream for help. The clown then put me down to open the van door. He still held my arm hard as I tried pulling away. My cousin stood there crying, not knowing what to do. It felt like the clown was about to throw me into the van when I saw someone who I assumed was security by his outfit, quickly approaching us. Hey, what are you doing with them? A clown immediately threw me to the ground, pushed Chris out of the way, and hopped into his van and sped off. The security guy talked into his radio as he ran toward us two terrified children. 
I don't remember much after that point. I think he took us to the entrance of the fairgrounds, and the people there were able to find or get a hold of our parents somehow. My mom, aunt, and little cousin met us at the gate within ten minutes. We all cried together when I told them what had happened. The police were called, and the first security man who found us had been able to read part of the license plate on the van to provide to law enforcement. Later in life, when I asked my mom about this situation, and if they ever found the clown who tried to take us, she told me he was apparently never found. The van had been stolen from a business a few blocks away from the fairgrounds, and a clown wasn't even employed at the fair that year. We didn't go back to the fall carnival for a few years after that happened. Once we did, and I was a bit older, I made sure to really watch my two younger cousins and never let them follow anyone, even if it looked like they were employees. I know if I ever have kids, I'll keep them in my sights always and tell them the dangers of strangers, even people who don't seem to be like strangers, like the clown Chris and I encountered. I just hope that clown didn't have a chance to hurt children again, but a large part of me knows that he probably has done it before and since that day. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here as always. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you decided to watch this far to the end of the video. If you guys like the content of this video, please be sure to like, share the video, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you do decide to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell button and turn notifications to all, so you can be notified of every video I post in the future. Although you can also just stop by every once in a while since I post a video every day, so it'll be hard to miss them. If you guys have any thoughts on the stories or any criticisms on how I can make the video better, please be sure to leave those in the comments below. I always take joy in reading all the comments and trying to respond to as many as possible, so I really appreciate when you leave them. Uh, if you guys want to send in a story yourselves, please be sure to check in the description below the video. You will find links to all of my social media, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Try and send me a message on any of those, and I will read them as soon as I am able to, and get back to you if I can. If you do decide to send in your own story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is, the type if it has one, and how you would like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to arrange proper formatting and use proper grammar as well, as it makes it easier to read in a video. Also, if you guys enjoy my content, I have two other channels I run as well, where I do monthly disaster documentaries and I do weekly true crime documentaries. Those channels are called Darkest Hour and Mr. Blue Skies, respectively. You can find links to those in the description. Please be sure to check those out if you enjoy those kinds of content. Uh, overall, though, guys, I think that's pretty much it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.